So welcome you at this breakout session of the Deloitte Fast 50 on the financing opportunities for uh, tech scale-ups. So here in the list we can say is that we are facing challenging times, war in Ukraine, inflation, recession. What's your view on the current situation? Yeah, the war is definitely not good and, it, and it's fair to say that the world is really in, in turmoil, um, which is not good for business. Uh, on the other hand, if you look at uh, things sometimes come out of, great things come out of a crisis. So if you look at historically, uh, after crises, there's always like renaissance, there's new stuff. Mm. So from that perspective, it can be looked at hopefully positive. But I think from a, from the war perspective, uh, I think really the, the, the US, the Americans are, are the winners and, 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 and it's really not very good for Europe. I think Europe is paying the price for the, for the war in, in a certain respect. Uh, if you look at it historically as well, uh, the US always have thrived very well on war. Uh, they have always been in war since, uh, since the 50s, except for the last years uh, when they were kicked out of, of Afghanistan or left Afghanistan. So I think for, for them having a war is good and they deliver the weapons, but it's Europe actually who pays the price. And I, I hope uh, that it's not like going to be just after the Second World War, where at, actually the Americans are going to provide technology and the Europeans will not be able to do anything but to buy the technology. And, and so I hope that we can actually stand and, and that we don't pay the price for the whole conflict. Yeah. And what's your, your, the, the impact that you see on the financing of tech scale-ups uh, th these days? Because, well, the rising interest rates, uh, the, the inflation, well, that has clearly an impact on the, the valuation of the, the companies. Uh, but some of them need uh, some money. So what, what, what you see as opportunities? Uh, yeah, is I think there's still money available for sure. But what you also see is that funds will uh, take the money and use the money for their own participation. So it's going to be more difficult to get money because uh, the funds will focus on their own portfolio rather than taking external new ones. And secondly, I also think that valuations will be a lot lower. Um, and I think from an entrepreneurial perspective, it's difficult. Eh? A year ago, it's like the interest rates. A year ago, there were no interest rates. Now it's 4%, very similar with valuations. A year ago, valuations were 10, 12 times revenue. Today, it's four times revenue. So it will take a few quarters for the entrepreneurs to sink in. And I think the fact that money will become more expensive, that will also change the shift towards um, profitability. So before it was growth, 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 grow, never mind profitability, just grow. I think this is going to change because of the fact that if you grow, you still need money to do it and you have negative EBITDA. I think boards are going to shift much more on profitability and say, okay, you can grow, but you have to do it in a profitable way, which is a completely different way of thinking. Eh? Because in the last 12, 15 years, I think most entrepreneurs, they don't have any experience with this kind of thing mm. because they've been like educated and grow not really an EBITDA. So it's going to be interesting to see how entrepreneurs will deal with that. And, and do you see a kind of shift from uh, revenue companies to, to EBITDA companies where investors will require that uh, the company has already some, some EBITDA to, uh, to, to get uh, financing? Or Yeah, but on the other hand, for a technology company, most technology companies, they don't have an EBITDA yet because most companies, and definitely also in Belgium, we have some larger companies, but we have a lot of smaller technology companies. Most of these technology companies are still working their technology and are still investing in their technology, so they're still negative on an EBITDA level. So it's very hard then to, well, say a kind of multiple on your EBITDA if you don't have an, uh, an EBITDA. So I think from that perspective, the focus will remain on revenue and on revenue multiples. But on the other hand, I also think that uh, the fact that uh, money is so scarce and money is becoming more and more expensive, that boards and, and also investors and, and, uh, and, and people around companies are going to say, well, maybe you should think twice before spending money. And so people are going to look very much more closely to one dollar or one euro. What can I do with my euro and do I actually spend my euro well? Mm. And we heard uh, in the, the, the recent months, uh, uh, so some companies, especially in the US, that had uh, cost containment plans or cost cutting plans where they laid off um, hundreds of, of people. Is this something that you recognize as well? Uh, um, yeah, so far I really haven't seen it yet. It doesn't mean that it cannot come. Uh, I, I don't really see like cost-cutting programs of 10-15% cost-cutting like we've seen in the years 2000 and 2008. What I do see is that um, the plans of like we're going to hire like in your business plan or in a budget 50 people, they look at it again and say, well, maybe we should not hire 50 people. Maybe, maybe we should only hire 10 people or maybe we should do a hire free. So that's, that's happening. 
at the same time, you also think about internationalization. Most of these growth companies, they want to internationalize, they want to grow and so on. And what you do see, rather than going after five countries or three countries at the same time, people are saying, well, maybe you should think twice about it. Maybe you should only go after mm -hmm. one country. So still growth, but modest and, and, and very much focused on making sure that you contain your people on one hand and contain the expansion cost on the other hand. But really cost cutting, not, not yet. But I'm pretty sure if the recession continues and if it really is going to hurt uh, general people and also the spending power of, of, of companies and people, then it's going to have that kind of impact uh, over time. I hope it's not going to be like that. No, 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 no indeed. Let, let's hope. Question on the, on the unicorns. Some people say that we have too few unicorns in, in Belgium. Um, what's your view on that? And is there something that the public authorities could do in order to, to promote uh, the, the unicorn ship in, uh, in, in Belgium? Yeah, I, I fully agree that they're not enough. I think we should have 10 to 15 unicorns. If you compare Belgium with Scandinavia, we're pretty much the same like Sweden. They have much more unicorns in Sweden. Um, I, I don't think it's a matter of money because a lot of people say, well, there's not enough money in Belgium, blah, blah, blah. I think the time that a Belgian company cannot get funding uh, is, is, is not there yet. I mean, you can get access to American investors, you can get access to to, uh, to UK investors, so there's, there's money pouring in. If you want to grow your business, you can find it. So that's not the issue. Uh, I, I do think that it's it's much more experience. I, th I think our managers and our, our entrepreneurs are still young. They sometimes lack experience and they also lack sometimes ambition. And I think if we, if I would be government, I would really not focus on just providing money, but I would really provide aid. I would really provide knowledge. I would really provide how do you how do you conquer the world? How do you do that? And are there lessons that can be learned from entrepreneurs who've done it before because if you have experience and you try to share that experience with young people it's really helping them and helping them by squeezing time by doing things faster and I think in the digital world of today it's not so much the best product but it's the one who gets to the market first and I think that's something from a governmental perspective we should do much more on the other hand I also think that being an entrepreneur it's not a democracy I mean it's 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 not a a social system it's uh, the winner takes it all and so if I would be the government as well rather than spreading all the means over different companies and trying to be good for everybody mm -hmm. just be good for the for the good ones and really focus your efforts and your attempt and your money into the right ones and build those into global companies mm -hmm. yeah uh, having uh, experienced people on board will definitely help uh, companies to grow and to, to win time and, and to, to be to be faster in implementation so that brings us also to the to the world of talent eh, that, that we have these days. Eh? A lot of companies are hiring, but uh, those companies can't get the, the right profiles. Uh, um, very strange as we are about to, to get into into a recession. But that's the that's the way it is today. So, what would be your tips to uh, to attract the best talents uh, um, for when you're a scale up? Yeah, I mean, obviously making sure that you have the right environment. But I, I do think from a company's perspective, what I see is that a lot of companies, uh, well, they, they try to attract people by all kinds of stuff, but the best thing in my position is to try to have a kind of purpose for your company. I do see that in, in my time when I was like uh, graduating and going for a job, I was interested in what kind of car do I get and what's my salary. I think young people today and, and bright people are much more interested in what is the purpose of this company. And with purpose, I don't mean necessarily that the company needs to make money. Every company needs to make money, but that should not be the purpose of the company. The purpose of the company is what are you doing really? What are you really doing for the world, for nature, for grandchildren, whatever? What's, what's your purpose? And I think companies who don't, who are not capable of really establishing what their purpose is or, or, or actually explaining that to young people, they will not find the best talents. And the best talents, in my opinion, are the ones who will work for companies that have purpose. Thank you for these tips and thank you for your insights on the financing opportunities for the tech companies. No problem, you're welcome. Thanks. Thank you.